Welcome, APA Baseball Classic fans. This is Game 2 of the Dead Ball Era Division Tournament. We have today the 1920 Brooklyn Robins against the 1917 Chicago White Sox. Here's your starting lineups. Ivy Olsen, Ivy Olsen will lead off and play shortstop for Brooklyn. Jimmy Johnson is at third base. Tom Griffith will be playing right field. Zach Wheaton, left field. Hi Myers is the center fielder. Pete Kildurf is the second baseman. Otto Miller, Mooney Miller is the catcher. And Burley Grimes, a grade A Z pitcher on the mound. For the 1917 Chicago White Sox, Eddie Collins will off play second base. Tweed Reesburg is shortstop. Joe Jackson is in right field. Happy or Buck Weaver is at third base. Happy Felsch is in center field. Chick Gandel at first base. Nemo Labeled in left field. Ray Chalk is the catcher. And Eddie Sticotti is the grade A C pitcher. Y and Z modifiers. All right, with that out of the way, we're ready to begin. <clears throat> Sakati has completed his warm-up tosses. He is a knuckleball pitcher. He also threw spitballs and shine balls. Those were legal in 1920, I believe. All right, here is Ivy Olsen. 3-4 three, three, is a fly ball to center field caught by Happy Felsch. And Ivy Olsen is the first out of the ball game. Jimmy Johnson, 26, is a fly ball to left field. That's Tom Griffith comes to bat with two outs. 51 is a 9 against an A. That's going to be a ground out to the shortstop Sweet Risburn. And the Robins are retired. In the top of the first, we go to the bottom of the first, no score. Okay, Burley Grimes is taking his warm up tosses to pitch to Eddie Collins of the Chicago White Sox. Grimes was the last of the legal spitball pitchers. He was grandfathered in. When the spitball was outlawed, following the beating of Ray and fatality of Ray Chapman in 1920. And, uh, but there were 17 pitchers who were allowed to continue throwing spitballs until their careers ended, and no new pitchers could take up that trade. Here's the pitch to Eddie Collins. 21 is a fly ball to left field, caught by Zach Wheat. First out, one down. Sweet Risberg, the shortstop. It's a nine against an A pitcher. That's going to be a ground out to shortstop. Two down. And here is shoeless Joe Jackson. 64 is a 22. Brooklyn is fielding column two. So that, that's going to be a ground out to the first baseman with the assist to Grimes, the pitcher. That's the end of the first inning. We go to the top of the second. No score. Here is Zach Wheat. Uh, the, the opening was about Zach Wheat. He is buried in Four Hills Cemetery along with my same place my uncle, one of my grand uncles, is buried. Zach Wheat was from Polo, Missouri and returned after his career to farm and then he ended up coming to Kansas City because of the depression couldn't make money off his farm and uh, became a police officer for four years in Kansas City and then after that he ran a hunting and fishing result, resort uh, south of Sedalia in Missouri here's the pitch to Zach Wheat 25 and this Hall of Famer is going to be retired they Pop out to third base. Still looking for our first base runner here in the second inning. High Myers. 23 is a ground ball to second base. Two away. 
Here is Ed Conecci, and uh, he four times he hit over 300 in his career, about a 281 lifetime hitter. Here's the pitch to Conecci. 65 is going to be a pop up behind home plate, caught by the catcher Ray Shock, and the Brooklyn's are retired in the top of the second. We go to the bottom of the second, no score. Buck Weaver will we leave off for the White Sox. It was interesting how his career took a turn in the offseason when he was chopping wood. He realized um, that he could see the wood, he could hit the spot on the logs more accurately from the left side than he did from the right side. And so he decided to take up switch hitting, and his batting average went up by 49 points. Here is the pitch to Weaver, 23. That's a ground ball to third base. And he is retired by Johnstone to the first baseman, Konechi. One away. Happy Fell. 54 is a roll. That's going to be a fly ball to right field. Caught by Tom Griffith in right. Two outs. Chick Gandal, who infant infamously was the instigator of the scandal in the Black Sox series in 1919. Here's the picture of the Gandal, 21, that's a swing and miss for strike three. And that completes the second inning. We go to the top of the third inning, no score, no hits, nobody left on base either. Pete Kilduff will lead off for the Robins. He tragically died at age 37, 10 years after the 1920 World Series from a bout of uh, appendicitis. Cicotti pitches to Pete Kildiff. 21 is a fly ball to left field. And that is caught by Nemo Lebo. One down. Otto Mooney Miller, the catcher. 50, 64 is going to be hit on the ground. 27 to the third baseman. He's thrown out. 3 to. Five to three. Two away. The pitcher, Burley Grimes. That's the base hit, and that's the first hit of the game in the first base run of the game. It's the pitcher who gets it, Burley Grimes. Ivy Olson is the batter from Kansas City, Missouri. 21 is going to be a fly ball to left field, caught by Nemo Lebo. And we go to the bottom of the third, no score. Burley Grimes to Nemo Lebo. 64 is going to be a base on balls, and White Sox have their first base runner. He is a fast runner. We're using APA Basic. Don't have the steel writings for the Brooklyn, so <laughs> we'll have to use APA all the way through. Ray Chalk is the batter. Um, not going to hit and run. Here's the pitch. 54 is a fly ball to your right field. First out. Here's the pitcher, Ed Sicotti. 1-5 is a 9. Run on first. It's going to be a single, an infield hit. So both pitchers have single in the game. They have the only two hits, first and second, with one out and a threat going here for the White Sox. Top of the order to Eddie Collins. We had one of his lowest batting averages of his, of his career in 1917. He hit 289, but uh, Collins was a Hall of Fame performer, uh, very fast runner, participated in four championships, both with, you know, with the A's and also with the White Sox. Here is the pitch and one out to Collins. 34 is going to be a fly out to the center fielder, High Myers. Two away. 
Sweet Risberg, the shortstop. 22, that's going to be an 8 against an A pitcher, first and second. That's going to be a ground out to third base, 5 to 3. Closes out the third inning, we go to the top of the fourth, no score. Jimmy Johnson leads off for Brooklyn. Here's the pitch to Johnson. 52 is a ground ball to the third baseman, and Jimmy Johnson is retired. Tom Griffith. Forty-five is the roll. That's going to be a base on balls. Brooklyn has their second base runner. There's one out. Griffith is at average speed. Zach Wheat. He led the Robins in 1920 with a 328 batting average. Here's the pitch. Sixty-five is going to be a pop-up to the catcher, and Wheat is retired. There's two outs. Here's High Myers, and High Myers is the other player who hit 300 for Brooklyn in 1920. 61 is a 9 against the A pitcher. That's going to be a base hit for High Myers. Runners on first and second with two away. Ed Konechi. 31 is an 8. Let me back up to that last play because Sicotti is an AC hitter. I'll double check that that was not an out. Nope, because it's a single on center as well on the C side. So first and second is correct. Connect 31 is an 8. That's going to be a ground out to third base. And that ends the top of the fourth with no score. Shoeless Joe Jackson will lead off the bottom of the fourth inning for the White Sox. He was the White Sox hitting star from the time they picked him up in 1915, a natural left-handed hitter. And he used a 48-ounce bat. It was not uncommon for dead ball hitters to use heavy bats. And he definitely used a heavy one at 48 ounces. Here's the pitch to Jackson. 43 is a 29. That's a ground out to the pitcher, one to three. He had a name for his bat, and that name was Black Betsy. Buck Weaver comes to bat. 21 is a fly ball to center field. Two away. Happy Felsch. 46 is a swing and a miss for strike three. We go to the top of the fifth. Pitching duel, no score. Pete Kilda flees off for the Robins. 56 is a ground ball to third base. That's Buck Weaver. Throws over to Chick Gandel, and there's one away. Otto Miller, the catcher. 63 is a fly ball to center field. Caught by High Myers. Uh, no, um, I'd be happy Felsch in center field for the White Sox. That's two outs. And the pitcher, Burley Grimes. Grimes has one of the only two hits for the Robins. 63 is going to be a swing and a miss for a strike three. Go to the bottom of the fifth, still no score. We are in a tight pitching duel, and every play seems to be magnified in these kinds of games. 64, 41 is going to be a error on the shortstop. That's an error on Ivy Olson. So Gandalf will be at first, every speed running wise no outs Lamo labeled is the batter he's, he's going to square around and sacrifice 31 is a 9 and that's going to be a sacrifice 5 to 4 Gandal goes to second 1 away Ray Shock. 36 is a 33 that's popped up to the shortstop. Caught by Ivy Olson. That's two outs. And now Eddie Sicott. 
That's a hit column roll for Seacott. 1-3 is going to be a double to left center field, and Sicotti is 2 for 2, and he has an RBI, and the White Sox score the game's first run. He'll bring the bat, Eddie Collins. He finished his baseball life in the Red Sox front office from 1932 to about 51, I think. Um, very bright man. 43 is ground ball back to the pitcher, Burley Grimes. Makes the play, but the White Sox on two hits get on the board. We go to the top of the six, one to nothing, Chicago. All right, Ivy Olson leads off the top of the six for Brooklyn. He's another player from the Kansas City area here. Uh, there's a few of them in this game, and he grounds out to shortstop. One away. Jimmy Johnston. 25 is the roll. That's going to be an eight uh, against an AC pitcher. That's going to be a pop out to third. Two away. Tom Griffith. Fifty-six is going to be a ground out to third. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Still one nothing Chicago. Sweet Risberg was part of the Black Sox scandal in nineteen nineteen. Went to court in nineteen twenty. They were acquitted, but uh, Judge Landis banned them from baseball. Uh, Risberg threatened Sheila Joe Jackson physically when Jackson found out what was going on. And then when he was banned from baseball, he ended up being a dairy farmer in Wisconsin. Here's the pitch to Risberg, 64, 23. Um, feeling column two is going to be an error on the center fielder, High Myers. Fast runner at first. No outs. And Joe Jackson. Okay, Chicago is going to hit and run. 23 is a 12. That's going to be a ground out to second base, 4 to 3, with Risper going to second. One away. Buck Weaver. Fifty two is the roll. Twenty seven is the result. That's gonna be a five to three ground ground out. Reesberg will have to hold it second. Two outs. Happy Fouch. Fifty six is gonna be a swing and a miss for a strike three. We go to the top of the seven, Chicago one, Brooklyn zero. Okay, Zach Wheat leads off for the Brooklyn Robins. It's a 1 4. It's a fly ball to left field, caught by Nemo LeBold. One away. High Myers. 304 hitter in 1920, and we just lost a dice off the table, so we're going to re roll that. It's kind of a home roll. 31 is going to be a 8. Pop out the third. 2 away. Ed Conetti. 26 is going to be a ground out to shortstop. 6 to 3. Go to the bottom of the seventh. Sox 1. Robin 0. Chick Candle will lead off for the White Sox. Good defensive first baseman. Here's the pitch. 22 is a base hit for Jick Candle. He is two for three on the day. And he'll be at first and nobody out. Average speed at first. Nemo LeBold is the hitter. 1-5 is going to be an 11. And that will go first and third, I believe. And the batter will steal second on the next pitch. So now second and third, only one out, and the Robins are going to play their infield tight to try to stop the run at the plate. 
Ray Shocks the batter. Shock was small. He was only five foot nine. And um, there is a story that his rookie season, he, he was not allowed in the ballpark. The policeman said that he didn't look like a player. He looked like a, a child. So um, he finally convinced the policeman to let him go in the dugout with him and the other White Sox players acted like they didn't know him. <laughs> he was a good catcher though, Hall of Fame player. 32 is a 26. That's going to be a the infield close. The runner's out at home and the other goes to third. Fielder's choice. Uh, fielder's choice goes four. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, four, two, two. So now we're first and third with one out. Winfield is going to play back for the pitcher, Ed Sicott. And Sicotti is two for two, singles and double. One four is a 30. That's going to be a fly out the left field and a sacrifice fly. And Ed Seacott is accounted for both of the Sox runs. Two to nothing Chicago. Back to the top of the order and Eddie Collins. 31 is a 9 against an A. That is a single. And actually, he's going to be a, it's against a B because uh, home rules, starting pitcher gets fatigued in the seventh inning when two bad things happen. And he's had two bad things happen. But it would be a single whether he was an A pitcher or a B pitcher. The runner goes to. Let me see. Oh, no, as a B pitcher, take that back. It's an out. Five to three. So Collins is retired. So we go to the top of the eighth. White Sox two, Robins nothing. He killed the fish off the top of the eighth for the Robins. 41 is a ground out the shortstop. One away. Eddie Sicardi has only allowed three base runners the entire game. Two hits and a walk. Here's the pitch to Lonnie Mooney. 42 is a swing and a miss for strike three. We're talking about Ray Shock being 5'9". Sicardi was only 5'9 himself. So he was definitely a junk ball pitcher, knuckle balls, spit balls, shine balls. Timeout. Brooklyn will bring in a pitch hitter with two outs here in the eighth for the pitcher. William Lamar, 42, is a swing and a miss for a strike three. We go to the bottom of the eighth, two nothing Chicago. New pitcher for Brooklyn is Rube Marquard. He is a grade C pitcher, Z modifier. Sweet Risberg will lead off the bottom of the eighth for Chicago. 22 is going to be an eight. That's going to be a base hit for Risberg. He is one for three. Fast runner at first. Joe Jackson. Try to hit and run. Last time in this situation, he hit and run again. 56 is going to be 34. That's going to be a line drive to the shortstop. Caught in a double play, six to three. So the hit and run wipes out the base runner. And quickly, there's two outs in the bottom of the eighth to Buck Weaver. 25 is a base hit for Buck Weaver. He is one for 10. He's a fast runner. Happy Felsch. 1 3 is a 14. That's going to be two balls and no strikes. He has the Z modifier. 
62 is a 26. That's going to be a ground out to second base. All right, we go to the top of the ninth. Chicago 2, Brooklyn 0. Robbins will be at the top of the batting order. Ivy Olsen, Jimmy Johnstone, and Tom Griffin. Here's the pitch to Olsen. 56 is a ground ball to third base. Handled by Buck Weaver, one away. Jimmy Johnstone. 41 is a ground ball to the shortstop, Sweet Risberg. He throws over to Chick Gandall, and there's two down. Tom Griffith with Buck Wheat on, with um, Zach Wheat on deck. 41 is going to be a ground out to Risberg. That closes out the ball game. Final score and moving on will be the 1917 Chicago White Sox 2, Brooklyn Robins 0. Back with a wrap up. Okay, for a dead ball era game, this is a pretty clean game. Only one error in the entire game. The Brooklyn Robins had no runs on two hits and they committed one error. The Chicago White Sox had two runs on seven hits, and they committed no errors. The winning pitcher was Eddie Seacott. He pitched nine innings, no earned runs, two hits, three, three Ks, and a walk. Brother Grimes was pretty similar. He is the losing pitcher. He gave up five hits, but like um, Seacott, he struck out three and walked one. Seven innings for Grimes. He's the losing pitcher. The star of the game, Eddie Seacott. Not only did he pitch a shutout and limit the, the Brooklyn Robins to only three base runners, he provided all the offense for Brooklyn as well with a, with a uh, s a single, a double, and a sacrifice fly. So he has two for two with two RBIs. Eddie Sicotti, today's star of the game, the Chicago White Sox will move forward and play in the winner's bracket. They will play against the 1909 Pirates, led by Hannes Wagner. Uh, tomorrow, we will start the winner's bracket with a game between the 1912 New York Giants and the 1915 Boston Red Sox of Babe Ruth, a pitcher of Babe Ruth. Join us tomorrow. Thanks for watching today. Have a good day and God bless.